Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com. In this video, I'm going to look at what the odds are of being hit by a major hurricane. In 2016, the Washington Post Capital Weather Gang was terrified by the lack of hurricanes hitting the United States. They were complaining that a major hurricane hadn't hit the U.S. Gulf or East Coast in more than a decade. In that article, they included this graphic showing that it had been 3,937 days since a major hurricane hit the United States. They were also complaining about the record lack of hurricanes in Florida, which hadn't been hit by a hurricane in more than a decade. Six years later, Florida gets hit by Hurricane Ian, and this is what the Capital Weather Gang has to say. How climate change is rapidly fueling super hurricanes. An unprecedented number of storms rated Category 4 or stronger have lashed the U.S. shoreline in recent years. This claim is ridiculous and is the exact opposite of what they said six years ago. The global trend in major hurricanes is sharply downwards over the last 30 years. The press has been widely touting this statistic, which is based on very bad science. According to the National Hurricane Center, a Category 4 hurricane will cause most trees to be snapped or uprooted. But if we look at this picture of damage from Hurricane Ian in the Washington Post article, we don't see any trees snapped or uprooted. Almost all of the damage in this picture is water damage from the storm surge. You don't need extremely high winds to produce a large storm surge. But you do need very high winds to snap a tree, and we do not see that in this picture. Let's take a look at how they created this fake statistic. In the past, hurricanes were measured by either wind speed, damage, or central pressure on land. But now they're measuring wind speeds at altitude over the ocean, which are guaranteed to be much higher than wind speeds on land. They've created this fake statistic by doing an apples to oranges comparison. It's like the difference between measuring temperature at a poorly sighted thermometer versus one at a well sighted thermometer. The world's record temperature of 134 degrees set at Death Valley in 1913 was taken at this very well sighted thermometer. Now they measure temperatures at Death Valley at a very poorly sighted thermometer, which the press loves to use for propaganda. On Anthony Watt's website, the former director of the National Hurricane Center, Dr. Neil Frank, gave a very good explanation of how the press is misinterpreting data from Hurricane Ian. He listed some hurricanes in Florida which were stronger than Ian, including 1919, 1926, 1928, 1948, 1960, and perhaps 1873. Eight of the deadliest Atlantic hurricanes occurred right around the time of the Revolutionary War. The 1780 hurricane killed 24,000 people and had winds over 200 miles per hour. Every single structure in Barbados was destroyed. The 1780 and 1898 storms at St. Vincent stripped all of the vegetation bare off the island. The Barbados hurricane of 1831 also had winds over 200 miles per hour and may have been stronger than the one in 1780. This is what Providence, Rhode Island looked like on September 23, 1815, when it was hit by a major hurricane. The most powerful hurricane to ever hit New York City hit in 1821. It came in at low tide, but had it come in at high tide, it would have largely destroyed Lower Manhattan. My parents were survivors of the 1938 hurricane in New York, and this is what Peterborough, New Hampshire looked like. This scene in Peterborough, New Hampshire was typical of the havoc done by a tropical hurricane which swept New England and the North Atlantic seaboard. This is what Providence, Rhode Island looked like in the 1938 hurricane. The deadliest hurricane in U.S. history killed about 10,000 people and destroyed the city of Galveston, Texas. That occurred in September 1900. The inflation-adjusted most expensive natural disaster in U.S. history occurred in 1926 when Miami and Fort Lauderdale were destroyed by a major hurricane. This is what Miami Beach looked like in 1926, and the storm was blamed by scientists on sunspots. Two years later, the 1928 Florida hurricane was the second most deadly in U.S. history. And on that same day, there were massive forest fires in California. Thousands of people died in the 1928 Florida hurricane. 
The most intense hurricane to hit the U.S. in the last 150 years occurred in Florida in 1935. The 20-foot storm surge from that hurricane washed this train right off the tracks in the Florida Keys. And that same week, 75,000 homes were destroyed in Japan by a typhoon. A few weeks earlier in 1935, Woodward Ranch, Texas hit the world's record rainfall of 22 inches in 2 hours and 45 minutes. And that came just a few hours after the previous world's record set in Colorado. And a few weeks before that was the worst dust storm in U.S. history. Hurricane Hazel in 1954 was the deadliest hurricane in Canada's history and did massive damage in the United States as well. The 1898 hurricane at St. Vincent swept the island clean of vegetation, and that came just a few months after a typhoon hit the Philippines, killing 7,000 people. Fifteen years later, a similar typhoon hit the Philippines, killing 17,000 people. In 1969, Hurricane Camille hit Louisiana and Mississippi with 200 mile per hour winds, and you can see the damage which was done in this animation. Thirty years ago, Hurricane Andrew destroyed everything in its path in Florida. The damage from Hurricane Ian last week was very bad, but it was nothing like the damage from Hurricane Andrew. The Washington Post is once again using fake statistics in their efforts to demonize the use of fossil fuels. This map from my website realclimatetools.com shows all the major hurricanes which have hit the United States since 1851. If you live along the Gulf or eastern coast of the United States, sooner or later you are going to get hit by a major hurricane. Prior to the advent of air conditioning, the Gulf Coast wasn't a very attractive place to live. The climate was too hot and humid. But over the past 60 years, tens of millions of people have moved to hurricane-prone areas. When they do get hit by a hurricane, the ambulance chasers in the press jump in, make up fake statistics, and blame it on fossil fuels. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on the snake oil salesman in the press and politics for the past 14 years. You can visit him, Kyrie Caesar, Toki and Upla on the web at realclimatescience.com.